Hi everyone, uh, so I'm Jean-Marc Montagné. I'm going to present you the work I did with uh, Charlie Rubio at uh, the BSC. As you can see, uh, it will be uh, quite nice for you since we are continuing on the same topics, so decision-making in agent-based models. The difference with the talk of Colin is that uh, I will look at it from a purely theoretical point of view, so I don't have a specific test case or whatever. And uh, the game or the goal we are going to play is to not write the decision making algorithm, but to have a general method that uh, learn to take decisions for us. <coughs> okay, so uh, a quick uh, recap, uh, it is almost unnecessary now. Uh, so in past societies, we have a large number of individuals, like in the previous test case presented, they are taking decisions and they are interacting between themselves and with the world. Uh, these, can, these decisions can be of different type, moving in the environment, consume resources, uh, fight with others, etc. etc. And uh, we are trying to understand which process was used at that time to make these decisions. Uh, so there are some examples of uh, behaviors that I had planned to speak about, but uh, the example we saw for the last 20 minutes is perfect. This is the kind of thing we could think about when we are thinking about fixed strategies, something that we have written down by ourselves behind our computer and we expect them to behave in a certain way. Uh, the advantage is that we understand quite well what the agent are doing since we wrote it uh, and it allows us to compare between also to compare between different types of strategies. If you thought maybe they were behaving that way or maybe that way, you can easily compare them. The problem is that you do not take into account the learning abilities of the individuals. So if, the, uh, if we imagine the environment changing drastically in the previous example, then the decision-making algorithm does not work anymore. <coughs> and that does not match well real individuals that would adapt to new environments and learn, and learn new strategies. <coughs> Moreover, with uh, fixed strategies, you can uh, only uh, get from the simulation what you have put in it. So you have carefully thought about your, your system, you have carefully write your behavior, and uh, you know it's going to work, but uh, you somehow will not get some surprises from the system. It's not like the agents will tell you, hey, we, I could use this trick from the environment that you put me in, because this may work in the end. Um, so, what uh, we can propose is to learn the decision-making strategies, to leave the, the agents learn autonomously the, uh, the strategies they are going to use to behave in the environment you put them in. Uh, so this takes into account the adaptability of the individuals to the environment, being either a non-environment or environments that are changing, and uh, it uh, allows uh, the experimentator to learn uh, from what the agents are doing. You may see something that is unexpected and then you analyze it and you rewrite it down as a fixed strategy if you want to compare to other fixed strategies. Um, of course, there is some challenges to learn that, to, to use this type of system. So the thing is that the learning uh, process is a quite time-consuming thing, uh, as we'll see. Uh, also, it generally makes uh, debugging more difficult since your <coughs> agents are trying stuff, modifying them somewhat in a random fashion. Uh, you, can, uh, you do not know exactly what to expect from the simulation and sometimes it's hard to know if the learning is working correctly and just found the cheat or the environment is not designed correctly or uh, if there is a bug in your learning algorithms. Um, also, uh, so it's not different context, different <coughs> algorithms can be used uh, for learning and uh, we are going to see if we can find one uh, that is good enough for uh, archaeology. Um, so the scenario is uh, a dumbed down uh, version of uh, what was presented before. We'll uh, be interested in um, agents foraging energy. So what you can see on the left picture is uh, a 100 by 100 cell uh, environment. Uh, there are some uh, agents in uh, red. Uh, the light patch cells indicate a large volume of resources and darker patch cells indicate uh, that there is a few uh, resources available. So the agents have to learn to move 
uh, towards the high resources and uh, exploit that as much as possible. Uh, what you can see on the right picture is what the agent sees from the environment. So it only see uh, one cell around it. Uh, once again, the light patch cells indicate a lot of energy and the darker patch cells indicate uh, very few energy. What you can see also is that uh, the uh, agent is on a gray cell. It's because it has exploited automatically all uh, the resources that were available on that cell. Um, so we can see that from this setup, it will be interesting that the agent learns to go left or right because that's where there is the, the more energy. Uh, in this type of learning algorithms, we can put different goals. Uh, so we can try to maximize the number of agents in the environment and uh, or we can tell to the agents to uh, maximize the food that they get uh, in a selfish manner. Okay, um, so we found uh, one previous work uh, that was made on uh, this type of, uh, of idea to have agents to learn autonomously their decision-making uh, algorithm. Uh, it was termed UCT. I have put here the illustration and a bit how it's working, but I will just explain it with my hand, it's easier. Uh, the idea is that the agents follow a what-if strategy. So when they are in uh, one cell and it's time to take the decision of what they will do next, uh, they are looking at what will happen if I move left and then right and left and then right, right, right. Okay, I will probably get this reward. Then what happens if I move right, left, 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 right, etc., etc. So they explore all the possibilities of the combinations of movement they could do and pick the next movement that will lead to the possibly highest reward. Then they take into account the reward they effectively get to update their decision tree and they go on this way. Um, so the good part is that uh, this, uh, this strategy is compared to other fixed strategies is uh, achieving uh, good results. So it's at least as good as any other fixed strategies uh, tested in various difficulty of uh, environments. Uh, also, uh, so this class of algorithm is a general class of algorithm that is used in computer science. It has been explored elsewhere and uh, it can work if you change uh, the environment, if you change what is around the agent. It has not been tested uh, in the work of 2014, but it should work out. Uh, however, all this what if process of trying to look ahead what will happen at the next 10 time steps or 100 time steps is very expensive in terms of uh, simulation time. So even if we achieve good results with this method, we are taking about days of simulations to do one single run. It was uh, too prohibitive, for example, for me to reproduce the results uh, that were presented, uh, even uh, having the, the source code just given to me. Um, so the objective of this work is then to have a learning algorithm, so to study the, uh, that a learning algorithm that takes into account the, uh, how individuals, how real individuals may learn, so to have something uh, biologically inspired. Uh, it should be able so to adapt to changing environments like in the previous work and to work with reduced information. Here, reduced information is the fact that the agent can only perceive what is around it. It won't know the stuff that is way too far ahead of him uh, to, for him to, to see it. Uh, also, uh, we would like to have a method that is simple to understand and code so that we can easily adapt it to various cases. So that's where one of the critical points of learning is interesting. It's that you uh, do not have to write a decision-making algorithm each time you change your case study, but you will be able to use the same general uh, learning algorithms for various cases. Uh, also, so the main difference with uh, what uh, has been done before, we would like something that is uh, running fast uh, so that we uh, can explore many different scenarios and explore the whole range of parameters uh, of the environment. What we got, so the method we have explored 
uh, we have tried to use is called uh, reinforcement learning. Briefly, I will present at the end of the talk another method that could have been suitable, but that I knew was suitable. I knew it would work out, I was not afraid, so I tried the one I didn't knew. Uh, so it's called reinforcement learning. It's inspired from the way humans are learning things. Uh, the basic idea is that you are in a situation, you perform an action, it gives you a certain reward, positive or negative, and from that reward you learn which actions are the best in a specific situation. So you don't have to learn in a what-if situation, you are just learning the action that you are going at the next time step. Uh, it's uh, quite simple, I will explain it to you, it's just uh, two equations uh, that are explained all over the internet, uh, and I will skip the equations, I will just present it to you with the hands, it's, uh, it's simple enough. It runs easily quite fast, however, uh, it doesn't work. So this presentation is about uh, what I learned about this stuff I didn't know that uh, could be very interesting, but uh, do not work in the cases of the foragers. Uh, still, you, I think you didn't make a mistake by coming to this presentation because I will show why it doesn't work and in which cases it may work. So you maybe have a case where uh, this type of uh, algorithm is going to work. Um, so, what is reinforcement learning? Uh, we have three keywords, uh, state, action, and reward to learn. So the agent is in the environment and can see everything that is uh, around it at uh, one cell. This is called the state of the agent. So what you can see is the agent in gray. Uh, here, and the number of resources available in that cell uh, is this number. Then we have this cell that is this number, this cell that is this number, etc., etc. So all these string of, uh, of numbers describe the state in which the agent is, what is around it. Uh, then we have the action that the agent uh, will perform. So here it's moving up left, it corresponds to number one, action two is moving up, uh, action three is moving up right, etc., etc. And five is the reward that the agent is given from the simulation. So it corresponds here to that number. So these are the three first keywords that we need. Uh, we have a state in which the agent is, it takes an action, and it obtains a reward. The goal of the game is to learn uh, the actions that give the good rewards in a specific state. Uh, so, to do that, we have one more word that is called value, which is the value of this action in this uh, specific state. This is somehow the accumulated knowledge from uh, the agent of having performed the action many times. This is useful. Uh, in case your environment is somewhat stochastic. If you have five of uh, resources in a cell, but sometimes you get uh, four out of it, sometimes you get three, sometimes you get five, the value of performing the move towards going to this cell would not be five, it would be four point something. So the agent learns incrementally the value uh, of the action in a specific state. It also allows us to take into account the, uh, the changes of environment. If the environment changes, the agent will progressively forget that the action was previously beneficial and will learn what is the new value of this action in this state now that the environment has changed. So this is a process that is ongoing all the time. Um, and finally, uh, let's imagine that the agent has tried uh, many actions many multiple times in uh, this uh, same state. So it has tried all the actions possible. And uh, the action eight, which is moving left, is the one with the highest value. So it was either that one or that one that should have the highest value. It appears that just because of the way the agent has taken the actions first, this action moving left has the highest value. So most of the time, the agent we perform this action of uh, movie, moving left. Um, we also include the fact that the agent can randomly do a new action so that it explores action it has not done yet 
or actually it's not sure about the result uh, yet. So this is the third line that I've put in bold. It doesn't know what happens if it moves forward, what is the value of the sale, what, what an estimation of the reward that it will get. Um, now we are going to see when this algorithm is actually working. So this is a simple case. Uh, you can imagine it as a, a rat in a maze. Um, so you have in gray the rat, in black the walls of the maze, and uh, in yellow, uh, up left, up right, sorry, it's the, it's the reward that the rat should learn uh, to, to get. Uh, so when the rat finally managed to get to the reward, to the, to the goal, it obtains a reward, and we place it back somewhere in the environment. So the agent has to learn to move in that environment. Uh, will that thing work? Of course it doesn't. Um, so this is a demonstration of what the agent is doing. It's actually moving, and th that's what it learned. It learned the strategy of moving in the environment and uh, reaching the, uh, the goal. Uh, sorry. Here. Uh, so that's uh, when it was actually working. Now we are going to see when things start to fail. Uh, here you have a larger environment of uh, 10 by 10 cells. Uh, I have kept the same convention. The darker cells are the one with low energy. The uh, light cell is the one with a lot of energy. And in red we have uh, the agent. What is interesting about this environment is that it's larger than the previous one. And there are many cells that can be mistaken for another one. With the perception that the agent has, if he's here or here, it's exactly the same for it. Um, so what we can see is that if the agent is close to uh, the energy, so that's a view of an agent, the agent is uh, here, there is very few energy available, and there is this big patch of energy available to the bottom left, uh, the agent has indeed learned to put the highest value here. This is the most interesting move. However, what we observe is that if the agent is in the big unknown area, well, it gets lost. It doesn't learn how to explore the environment because reinforcement learning is particularly bad at learning how to explore uh, the environment. Now, when it really, really fails, is uh, when we put a 100 cell by 100 cell environment with uh, these agents in red, so the, the initial uh, test case I, I proposed you, what happens is that we have a super large number of possible states. And it means that our reinforcement learning algorithm would have to explore every uh, nine action possible in every possible uh, state. Uh, moreover, with this environment, uh, the agent always gets somewhat some energy from the environment. So we do not have the clear learning uh, episode. It's not like it arrives to the goal, we place it back, it arrives to the goal, we place it back. No, it has to learn almost all the time and everything gives a reward and we do not have, okay, now you got the reward, we push you back. Uh, and in this case, uh, what you can see on the left graph, in red it's random, in green it's the reinforcement learning algorithm. So it face quite badly, it's worse than random. Uh, so it learns to accumulate resources, that's okay, but um, there is too much things to explore and uh, it doesn't manage to, to learn everything. Here is an illustration of the problem. That's the type of, uh, of value table I obtain after one million iterations with an agent. The agent in that state, which is one of the state where it has explored the most actions possible, has only had the time to explore three actions. So of course there is no way that it's good. I don't know how, for how long I would have to run the simulation to obtain uh, something. Uh, moreover, uh, we see that uh, it has put a higher value in the bottom left cell than in the upper left cell, while uh, actually there is more energy in the upper left. So since there are too many states and too many actions, moreover the value associated to the cell is not uh, correct. It has not had the time to learn. Okay, uh, so for what could be done next and uh, why uh, this is still interesting. Um, on the reinforcement, so on the side of reinforcement learning, we have a simplification, we could simplify the state space. 
so that we have less states to explore and we have the uh, time uh, to, to learn it. Or uh, we could force the agent to explore more smartly the state space. So for example, trying to reach states it doesn't know, uh, perform preferably actions it has no idea about, trying to evaluate uh, if an action is uh, well understood or if it doesn't know well uh, what the action will do. Another completely different way is to not explore each state action possibility, but explore what is called the space of, um, of policies, so the space of decision making. This can be done with something called uh, evolutionary algorithms. So the idea is that you have a behavior, uh, that you, uh, you, write a, you write a system of behavior uh, with, uh, how much? Okay. No much. No much? Okay. Ask me questions about evolutionary uh, <laughs> algorithms.